Keep Britain Tidy. Shout out to Burton Outdoors, Lee, down in the south, uh, for tagging me. Thank you very much. I, I'm sorry it took uh, five weeks to get around to doing this short uh, interval um, advertisement for Keeping Britain Tidy. You know, we bushcrafters like to leave no trace, but the majority of people, are, I think the majority of people are the same actually. It's all in the potty training in childhood upbringing. You know, it's good to get kids educated. Sorry about the wind, uh, the microphone might well be uh, quite noisy, so, but a shout out to uh, Burton Outdoors, currently indoors no doubt, uh, for his campaign to uh, bring awareness, like many others, uh, to the importance of taking care uh, of the wild countryside and leaving no trace. So pick up your litter, keep Britain tidy and all will be well. This morning I did a little read up on legislation. In Scotland, the Land Reform Act of 2003 clarified the law, which has been rumbling on for quite a while. Uh, the first term, the Freedom to Roam Act was in the eight, middle 18th century or latter 18th century. Uh, but in 2003 it was uh, revised and clarified um, and uh, gives everybody the right uh, to uh, walk and have access over land and water uh, throughout Scotland as long as uh, one behaves responsibly it's possible even to walk through crops uh, along the edge um, and along the, the tractor tram lines through fields as long as you don't uh, destroy the investment and in new areas use old tracks and uh, the size of fields it's always been the case actually but it's clarified uh, the 1791 Act was the very first one in Scotland for right to roam and then 1865 uh, it was updated again and goodness knows so many times since uh, but it's starting to look clearer now uh, the 2003-2005 discussion uh, brought about legislation uh, to make it easier for people to understand their rights. Now lately people have been lighting lots of fires throughout the UK and in Scotland and uh, destroying woodland and it's, it's continuing as the weather continues to be reasonable people go outside and have barbecues, fires and, and glamping and, and make a mess of things. If that continues to grow, which I hope it doesn't, I hope this might be the only year that it, that it has happened at this, on this scale, uh, who knows, the law might be enforced or changed to restrict people even lighting a small campfire. Now we bushcrafters pride ourselves in not destroying the terrain. Uh, we tidy up afterwards and we use dead wood and not cut down green trees like a lot of people do. So take care, enjoy the legislation, respect the landowners, I've said all this before, uh, and uh, all will be well. Right. Today's objective is to try out the MTP in British woodland timber conditions when the grass is a bit yellower. Uh, this actually, I think, blends in quite well. Those of you who know me well know that over the past year or so my channel has evolved more into a, a military surplus gear use because I, I like the idea of being invisible even just for half a day. It's a plate carrier. I've taken out the padding and the plate and that's where the war tools, a chest harness of some sort with pouches and that keeps you uh, with enough space for your kit to do the bare minimum of comfort uh, in, in, in a bug out. So stand by, I'm just going to compare the MTP and my favourite is obviously DPM because up in this part of the UK it's usually very damp, wet and rainy and very green most of the year round. Although August, September we do get a little bit of grass and a bit of almost Middle Eastern type colours. So let's see how they blend in with the kit. So uh, for now, stand by and uh, let's move on.
So a closer look at the chest rig. It has an opening underneath for sliding in. If you remove the foam and, and or the plate completely, it should be possible to slip in a poncho in the front, which should be pulled down and pulled over uh, the patrol pack and the chest rig in one one instance. Uh, at the back it's a similar arrangement. Uh, the water bladder can go in the back, but instead of carrying your water around in a rubber bladder, uh, just pick it up as you go, a couple of litres every now and again, uh, which we can pick up along the way, is usually perfectly possible in Scottish terrain. After all, it's a wet, a wet country. So the chest rig is a great piece of kit. It protects you against the elements to a degree. Here I've got room for my map, torch, my phone, which I'll connect, uh, loop, connect so it doesn't get lost. Uh, notepad on the straps. Uh, one can put uh, a knife or another torch, a glow stick or two, but whatever you feel might be useful to you on your uh, 40 hour bug out. Lower down there are other pouches which you can keep your bug net and your skin and your uh, hat uh, so that, and the gloves even. The gloves can clip to the rucksack as well but it means you can put them off and on whatever the conditions are throughout the day because you know in Scotland we get four seasons in one day. It keeps everything to the front as I've been told is a good idea um, and it does. Everything's within easy reach. No need to take your pack off all the time. In the pack you keep your sleeping bag, ground sheet and tarp and uh, baby bag and uh, your cook system all to the back and on the side your water bottles and uh, on the front your essential kit. Well, that's quite good fun, guys. I have to say I do like the U-back shirts. Um, I'll let you see. I'll take this uh, rig off. Very strong straps on the side. Strong enough to hold a water bottle. Uh, brilliant piece of kit. Beautifully designed. Very nicely made. Really high quality. Uh, a Velcro uh, seam up the elbow sides for slipping in uh, cushion so that one can crawl around on one's elbows and that will take some of the impact off the, the elbows. Two shoulder pockets, uh, big enough to take uh, uh, a bandage and plasters for quick use, maybe even some gel for cleaning and instant piece of uh, first aid available on the left shoulder. And it breathes, you know, when you get hot it dries off quickly which means you can sleep in it probably uh, after getting damp, uh, after an hour or two you dry off. Yeah. All round, very, very lightweight, tough, and perfectly designed. So, really good kit. I think I prefer to wear one of those than even an army shirt, if I had one. It's a beautiful but very wild, wild, windy day. No flies, that's one good thing. That was four minutes, amazing. I think a full BCB amount of water would take a bit longer. I shouldn't really say this, but um, firstly the coffee, if you put it in just before the end of the boil, then it gets slightly stewed and gets the flavour out of the coffee bean. So another fine uh, detail about the U-back shirts is the zip-up collar. Beautifully tailored, fits really neat around the neckline, uh, keeping all the bugs out, which is just absolutely fantastic. If you were to wear a bug net and tuck it in and zip it up, you'd be totally secure. Very nice. 
we don't like drinking out of metal, so a collapsible green mug is to be ordered, I think. So till next time, try and get out even for the afternoon, enjoy the countryside and the tail end of summer. And uh, remember, if you're a good bushcrafter and tidy up as you go, you're not going to cause anybody any offence. And even then, you're going to be invisible and not seen anyway, so enjoy yourself. Good luck. Until next time, stay safe. Goodbye.